We're also going to cut up some scallions. I cleaned mine already, which means um, pulled back some of the dirty outer coating. They're um, really small onions, so it's kind of the same as you peeling um, a shell, I mean the outer paper off an onion. We're gonna cut the tips off of them because we don't want the tips with the roots. And we'll just slice those. You can either slice them on the um, diagonal and get more ovoid shapes out of them, or you can just cut them as circles. So I'm going to slice them on a diagonal as I like seeing different shapes. And you want to stop at the green. You don't really need the green part. We just more want a little bit of the oniony flavor. And because they're the same color as the cabbage, I'm going to put them on the opposite end, not just for um, presentation, um, but so that you can see them and know where they are. They're right next to each other. You wouldn't know where one began and the other one did. And I'm using a teeny bitty cutting board here tonight, so I'm not going to be um, demonstrating any of my knife prowess for you because I have a lot of stuff to fit into a small, small space. Um, so we have tomato. Um, if I can, I'm gonna pop this stem out of here. And if I can't, I'm going to cut around it, but I got it out. So tomatoes, there were a couple of choices with the tomatoes. You can just cut them in half and then slice them into, um, into thin uh, slices, just like we did with the cabbage. Um, or if you are a traditionalist as the French are, and I'm trained as a French trained chef, um, you would take all the seeds out of them by cutting them into wedges um, and getting all the seeds out and then chopping them into a dice. So um, because I think they're easier to handle, when they are sliced, um, I'm going to go the slicing option. So you just cut it in half, cut one half here, and I'm going to cut in the same right across, up and down, if you will. And I'm just going to slice it like I would an onion into thin slices with slices that hold together. Maybe I'll actually do um, both ways for you so that you can see how both ways are done. And um, I want to give a shout out tonight. I know that there are a lot of you in the audience, but I happen to have a couple of um, special guests out there that I was told are here. One is my older sister, and I'm very pleased and flattered that she's here watching. And um, we come from a large family. She's number one, and I'm number eight. So thank you for tuning in. I think it's wonderful. And she's all the way out in New Mexico. And then I believe that I have my mother-in-law on all the way from Wales. And um, it's well past her bedtime. So thank you, Marilyn, for tuning in. So here, in order to get the, set, the, the middles out of tomatoes, you would actually quarter the tomato and then take a knife and just follow around the flesh and cut out this little piece that's just the heart of it that holds all the seeds. And the reason why the French don't um, usually deal with that part of the tomato is because the seeds aren't digestible and um, they have this thing that everything that you eat should be digestible. So uh, we cut those. I'm just going to cut those out to show you what you could do if you don't like seeds. I know that there are people that don't like tomato seeds and that they find them slimy or just not nice. So I have this now. It's like a little cup, two of them. And this is what I would do if I were making salsa. I'd be preparing it this way. I wouldn't want all those seeds in there. I'd be actually um, taking the hearts out and chopping them in the manner that I am going to. And I'm going to cut lengthwise down the longest side into kind of this maybe three eighths of an inch, and then go across those strips to create a dice. And you can just add those. 
to your tray too. Some people want, might want the dice instead of the slice. So we're gonna get moving here a little bit faster on some of our filling so that we can stay on time. That's my dice. I'm just gonna put it on the plate here. Then also do the apple. I just have a simple red apple. I'm doing red because it's going to complement the other colors equally. You could do a Granny Smith. Um, you could use a yellow apple. It's really up to you. I'm going for um, our appetites are actually aroused by um, colors and smells. So I like to make things really colorful. And taco is one of those places where you really can have fun and play with color. So I'm just going to take a peek in the oven at my items going in there and they seem to be all right. And I'm going to cut around the core. If you had a core, you could do that, but it's just as easy to cut down the sides of the core and you'll get these small pieces after you've cut the big sides off and you just cut those down too. And what you're left with is this square kind of core in the middle and just discard that. And then again, we're gonna talk about this thin slice this shipping out again, but um, you want everything thin and uh, wafer-like with the tacos because um, you're gonna have a lot of stuff that you wanna combine in one small little taco. And if you have big chunks of things, you're not gonna be able to do that. You're only gonna be able to put a couple of things in there at once. I don't know if anyone's actually cooking along or if people are just watching. So if you are cooking along and you have any questions or you're not as far ahead as I am, um, feel free to text in and um, we can either slow down or um, address any questions you have. So right now on this tray, if you can see kind of how colorful it is. We've got our scallions, tomatoes, and the slice, and then the dice, and then our apples, and the cabbage. So put that right up the front. And then we'll have some of our other ingredients. Um, if you want cheese, uh, you can shred cheese. Um, I don't find that it's entirely necessary, and in a Baja taco, it wouldn't be there. So. Um, I'm gonna leave that for the last. If I have time to do it, I'll do it. It's not really, as I said, um, traditionally part of the Baja taco. And then I have an avocado here. Avocado, you just cut around and around and around. If you see it, just cutting around and around it um, because it has a, um, as we all probably know, it has a seed in there. And um, in order to get to the flesh, you need to cut around and twist it to expose it and then get the, the um, inner seed out of it. And usually you can just do that with a knife and twist it and it'll pop the seed right out. And then I just use a large soup spoon or a bigger spoon, depending on the size of the avocado to scoop the flesh out. And then we're going to, again, um, slice that. My husband loves avocado and on our Taco Tuesdays, avocado is a big part of what's being served. I have a little bit of a dark spot on this avocado, so I'm gonna scoop it off. That happens to you. Um, there's a point of no return where the avocado just isn't good at all, but most of the time you can um, salvage some of it. Now I'm gonna pause here and I'm gonna check my fish and chicken because I don't want them to overcook. The chicken really you can just press on as far as the touch. I think that that's all right to rest in. So Bridget, is that what you're looking for? The chicken to be firm? firm to the touch. That's the notes it that shouldn't it's bounce not. back. If it bounces back and or it leaves a dent in it, then it's not um, cooked. Salmon, 
pieces will easily fall away. There's this little piece that touched the top of it, it just fell right away. And you'll know that, that, that the salmon is done. But again, my confidence factor is more in, in the sense that I knew how thick they were and that I have a lot of experience cooking protein. And I share that with you so that you also can know that if you're um, conscientious about how you buy items, they're much more predictable to cook. If you're buying different sizes and shapes of chicken breasts all the time, first of all, don't, if they're different sizes and shapes, don't cook them together because they're not gonna cook at the same speed. Um, try and choose one or the other, or um, at least put one in after the other. Um, but the more predictable your size is, the more predictable your outcome is gonna be. And this fish, I think actually needs a couple more minutes. It's got a little bit of balance in it. And I wanna make sure that the flesh is firm, but not overdone. So I'm just gonna put that back in for a couple of minutes. Bridget, and, um, do you, Anne asked, do you ever pound the chicken to make or to get the same thickness? Um, I don't usually, pound, in this particular application, I don't usually pound it because um, I want something that's really um, thick enough for me to slice it into thin um, slices on the bias. Um, but you could do that, um, or you could, um, it's, I can't, maybe I can demonstrate with a piece of chicken um, and show you. The other thing you can do, if you have things that, that are dramatically different, and you will, if you buy um, organic chicken, you may have dramatically different sizes of um, breasts if you're using chicken breasts, because organic chickens, they don't um, all come in the same size. So the other thing that you could do here is before you cook it, um, you can slice your breast kind of horizontally through it to get it to be um, more of a similar thickness. I would do that for this application before I would pound it. And um, yeah, pounding is more for if you're gonna be sauteing and making a marsala or um, a sandwich or something like that. So um, all of my avocado isn't quite so beautiful, so I'm only gonna be using a little bit of it, but I'm not going to um, throw it away <laughs> because it's delicious. That on there and have only a couple of minutes left here. So I wanna get through our, our rice. The other thing that isn't on your list that I'm just gonna throw a little bit in there again for color is um, some pepper and um, super colorful, red, yellow, orange, really great to use. They brighten almost anything. I like to chop them into dice and put them in rice a lot of times and cook them first. Um, and I'm going to just show you, um, let me just rinse my hand a little bit back here. I'm gonna swap out the cutting board because the avocado was quite messy. Is um, a lot of people don't know how to approach the pepper and get the core out. They try and cut around on the center to get the core out. And it's just as easy to do what you did with the apple is you see all those seeds, the core, you don't wanna get any of those. Um, you don't wanna eat them, they're not digestible and they're not very nice. Um, it's to just cut, if I can show you, cut down the side like this and um, like you would, what, like I did with the apple. And basically what you're just gonna get is the side of the pepper. And I like to cut the um, white flesh off. Again, um, it's not very nice to taste and doesn't really add anything. And then do thin slices of the pepper. Not gonna do all of it because we're getting close to time here and we wanna put some of these things together. And then I'll do a little bit of the yellow just for color. I might put these ladies on the spot and make them assemble their own tacos or I might do it for them. The, the beauty of tacos and something like this as a family meal is that um, everybody has different taste buds. And if you have a wide range of ages, um, 
of people or you have guests over, it's hard to predict what everyone's going to want. So you can get all these nice toppings, just kind of like a pizza, and everyone can um, add what they want. Um, mangoes, very similar um, to an avocado in that they have a stone in the middle of it that you want to let your knife follow around so that you're not getting this hard stone in there. Um, and then there are a million ways people tell you to deal with avocados. I just like to cut them into bigger, kind of thicker, maybe a half an inch to three quarters of an inch wedges, and then slice the, um, the skin off of them like this. The riper they are, the easier it is to slice the skin off. But um, trying to do all the X, you know, all the cubes in the middle of it and then pop it inside out and everything is just takes a long time. So I'm gonna slice these two like I did the peppers. Put those out there and I'll separate them from the yellow peppers so that they don't get confused. So you just flatten your knife and follow along the skin here to separate this beautiful interior piece from this hard and inedible skin. And then the final thing I'm going to do is quickly um, grate a little bit of carrot. Um, if you want to use carrot and you don't want to um, use a box grater, you can always put it, I have my Cuisinart over here, you can always put it in a Cuisinart with the um, shredding blade on it. Um, Time, I'm not going to do the whole carrot, but I will get it started on a box grater. To give it a good start, I cut it on a diagonal because you're going to be rubbing it down the side of the box grater, and that's kind of how it's going to go anyway. And um, while you're cooking healthy, it's also good to take care of the environment, which is why I have this bowl here where, it's, where I'm putting all my scraps. Um, where I'll compost them later on. I'm the hands box grater. No one wants to eat your skin, and you don't want to be um, nursing a wound when you should be eating your tacos. The um, clean art produces longer. Um, shreds of carrot, kind of like when you're shredding cheese. So if you are particular about exactly what your carrots look like and you have a Cuisinart and you're comfortable using it, you can just use that. But this is nice and fluffy. I'm going to take my other fish out. It's cooked another couple of minutes. That the rest. Get rid of this. And we're not going to have time to redo um, the tortillas that I overcooked, <laughs> but um, you know what the general principle is. Set a timer, which I didn't for them, um, and don't get distracted. So we have our toppings here. I have this tray that I already showed you. I've got this additional tray of toppings, and I still have my red onions and I have my sauce. Um, I'm not going to do the cheese. I don't think we really need it for this type of tacos. I do cheese um, for my daughter because she really enjoys cheese, but um, I don't think it's really uh, traditional for the Baja tacos, so I'm not going to do it. And if we're going healthy, and particularly if you're trying to be vegetarian or vegan, and be closer to the vegan side. Cheese is just um, not something that is widely used. So I have my rice here in the pan. I'm gonna fluff it up a little bit. And then I'm just gonna toss it into this bowl so that I can mix it with the beans. And um, you don't have to feel obligated to use the entire 
amount of beans, I kind of go by sight. I'm probably only going to use maybe a third of the beans because, well, maybe a half because I don't really want the rice to get totally overwhelmed. And then I'm just going to mix it in here. You know what? What the heck? Let's just put them all in there. Or a little more anyway. When cooking, going by um, color and balance of the ingredients is a good way to make something that's tasty if it's got the right mixture of colors. So we have that. That in bowl, a nicer bowl to serve. Okay, so we have that. So in the end, just peppered in there. Um, you could season your rice if you want to, but um, I tend to eat my rice unseasoned. Uh, particularly with tacos because there's so many other things going on. So we have some meat to deal with here and fish. And I'm going to take, maybe we'll do the chicken first. And this is where I said that we would slice it and we want to slice it. I want to be able to get you to see this kind of, we're going to slice it kind of across and to an angle so that we get thin slices that are against um, cutting across the grain of the chicken so that it's easy to chew and you don't have a big chunk that comes out of your taco that it will shred. So I'm gonna do that. Chicken. And I'm not feeding an army tonight, so I'm not gonna actually slice the other chicken up yet unless I go through it. So that's just the chicken you can put on a serving plate. We're going to do the same thing with fish. Only with the fish, we're going to um, kind of shred it. And we can do that in the pan that it's been prepared in. But first, I need to take um, the salmon, Re really, if it's cooked properly, which it's doing right now. It's lifting right off the skin. See, so I've just picked the, the, but you can use a spatula too. But when you're doing tacos, doesn't really, you're not really trying to keep your salmon perfect looking. We're just gonna let it um, shred across its um, natural lines. Flush, just make pieces of salmon there to put on top of your taco. Um, let me see, because I don't think everyone can see that. So all I'm really doing is using my tongs to push naturally at the flesh, and it's breaking up into these thin slices that um, is how the flesh of most fish is. Um, it separates into, um, into, I don't know what they would really call it, but it separates. So that's the salmon. Then we'll do the same thing with the my my that's my my in the pan here and the my my will probably need a little bit more help than the salmon but maybe not um, it again should be pretty easy to break apart and if you want you can just put it on the serving dish and break it um, with the tongs which is what I'm doing here you see, I'm just using the tongs and pushing against it and it's breaking quite easily. Or if you want to, you can use two forks and kind of shred it apart. Um, Bridget, why did you choose mahi-mahi and salmon? 
um, to kind of, for a couple of reasons. One is to give people a choice. Some people don't really like white fish. And if I were serving a crowd, um, I would wanna give them options. Um, but um, the other reason is because I'm here trying to teach people something. And I really wanted to impress upon um, the audience that you can cook any protein the same exact way. A little olive oil, some salt, put it in a 400 degree oven, and it's very predictable to cook. You can take all the anxiety out of cooking fish because a lot of people are very intimidated by cooking fish. And um, I just wanted to show you that it doesn't matter if it's if it's a salmon or it's a mai mai or it's a halibut. Halibut tends to be a thicker fish, so it's gonna take longer to cook. Um, sole is a thinner fish, so it's gonna take a little less time to cook. But basically that um, it's all approachable and um, it doesn't, you know, doesn't have to only be had in a restaurant. Um, some people only eat certain foods in a restaurant because they are afraid to handle them. So I just wanted people to see the difference between that. And again, and a lot of people, um, not a lot of people, but some people don't like salmon. So that's that. We have a plate full of toppings for the protein. I'm gonna have a pile of dishes, man. Hands off a little bit. Now we're going to um, actually assemble some tacos. And um, I guess I could ask these ladies here um, what kind of tacos they want, whether they want corn or flour. And I will, um, I'll talk to you about the crispy one. I guess we're not gonna eat one today. Um, but the Baja taco is traditionally a flour tortilla. And you just take one or two um, and start adding whichever protein you wanted and whatever other toppings you wanted to it. Um, I'm going to maybe start with a little bit of carrot on one, um, some diced tomato. Some apple slivers, a little bit of cabbage. You see, I'm just arranging them on. Try and get it's kind of hard white on white, but arranging them on the top there. Um, maybe a slice of yellow pepper. Two. The mango. And then in this one, I think I will um, just put a little bit of chicken. And do you ladies like salsa? Salsa? Let's grab another spoon, I'll be right back. Get some salsa out of here. And again, it's just jarred salsa. It saves you time. Let someone else do the work if you're um, if you don't want to make something from scrap. And then there's a teeny bit of this beautiful cream I'm gonna put on the top. That's one of the tacos. In fact, I'll do another one on a different plate because I want to put some rice with that as well. Probably should have a bigger serving spoon. But basically, there you have chicken taco and rice and beans. So I'm gonna just put this to the side. So we're gonna be taste testing and then I'll just assemble um, one uh, with fish. Same thing, a little bit of cabbage. Bridget, I've seen um, there's a restaurant in Providence that I've had tacos at and they have pickled radish. Is that a traditional um, vegetable for a taco? For a Baja taco, because Baja is near California and California kind of Californiaizes and everything. Um, it is kind of similar to what I'm doing here with the onion. It's just um, 
colorful, crisp, bright. Um, I'm gonna put some of this red onion on this um, fish taco. Um, yeah, so it is commonly in restaurants, you will see it. So it would be either the radish or the onion. Um, it depends, you know, every chef's different and how they interpret it is different. Um, if you were in Mexico and Baja, it would be um, probably more traditional to see a radish. Um, but again, there's so many American influences now and mixed with different cultures that, um, and because the Baja taco is not traditionally Mexican, it came from another source. Um, there are some hard and fast rules, but um, it is on a flour tortilla, a soft flour tortilla. And typically um, it's white fish and it is um, fried. So I'm going to put a little bit of salmon in this one. I love salmon. Um, I'm a pescatarian, so uh, salmon is one of my go-tos for um, protein because I don't eat any um, animal flesh. And again, we'll put, this one is looking really beautiful. Just gonna put a little bit on. I put scallions on this one, a little bit of orange pepper, some mango again, some slices of tomato and a little bit of the apple. And we'll also put a little bit of this crema on top. Anyone has any last questions? They can take their questions in the Q&A. Yeah, if anyone has any questions or comments, I know Marilyn, you'll be whipping one of these up tomorrow. So this is the salmon taco and um, we're going to enjoy that here, the ladies. And I think that I will, um, you could make them here. I'm just gonna show you, you know, you can easily make a corn taco as well. And maybe I will make one of those and um, taste test that myself. So I'm gonna put a little bit of carrot in here. I have some apple. Oh, and I haven't used any of uh, the avocado. So I'll put a little bit of avocado in here. Some mango. Scallions. I will put my mahi in mine. And a little bit of the crema. Then try not to make a mess of it. Bon appetit. Mm. Delicious. The Mai Mai is really delicious. Just seasoned with salt, it's perfect. Really good. So, if we don't have any more questions, I'm going to leave you here. I hope if you did cook along that you were able to keep up. And if you didn't, if you weren't able to cook along tonight, you have the recipes. Now I hope that I debunked a lot of um, technique in the process for you and that you can on another date with um, a friend or family, make some tacos and share them. They're absolutely delicious. Thank you so much, mm. Bridget. Great. Mm. Delicious. This is what's for dinner here tonight. Thank you and goodbye from the Middletown Prevention Coalition and Middletown Wellness Month, where we're trying to take different spin on some traditional recipes and make them healthier so that you can be happier and healthier at home.